going back to how we got in the position we are uh, economically today. Okay. Do you see a solution to this problem? Yes, and no one will like it. Um, there, there's a couple components to it. First of all, we need to be energy. In, the United States needs to be energy independent. This is U.S. centric, not just because, uh, not just because I'm an America first idea. I mean, military, my life. I want my country to be the best it can be. That's MAGA. Make America great again. They don't like using that full name. They used the acronym to hide. Make America great. Who doesn't want to make their country great? Make Britain great again. Make Germany great again. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is used as a slur for some unknown reason because it's politically advantageous. But not only do I look at this because I believe in making America great, but the consequences are making the world great. The stronger the United States is, the more stable the rest of the world becomes. When, the, when America is weak, the world is destabilized. We see that right now in many aspects, economically included. So taking that as my basis, energy is one of the key cornerstones. America must be energy independent, and we can. We were, in 2019, 2018, we were. And in being energy independent, not only does it lower the cost of the United States, meaning that we can buy more goods from around the world, which is helping every other country in the world, but on top of that, that gives us the opportunity to help Germany. So they're no longer as dependent or potentially even dependent upon Russian oil. It gives less power to countries like Iran, where they're shipping out the oil and uh, empowering rogue nations around the world. This energy independence doesn't just benefit the United States, it benefits the world. And by having more energy, we enable more advances in our technology. They go hand in hand. The more abundant you have an energy source, the more you can make advances. If you believe in climate change, if you believe in man-made climate change, because the climate always changes, it always has. That's stupid. That's usurping an obvious fact of nature for a political outcome. And, and it's not real. If you believe in man-made uh, climate change, which I do not, then the answer is you want more technology. You want us to be energy independent. Because that will allow us to do more research, more technology to advance the things we need, like solar panels that are more effective at collecting solar energy, batteries that are more effective at storing that energy, better transmission lines and transmission systems so that we can have the energy go from wherever we're collecting it to wherever it's needed, and even to miniaturize it so you can more effectively be able to have that energy, whether it's solar or wind, geothermal, whatever it may be, to be able to use it on small scale in your home and have it on multiple homes or businesses, minimizing the need for it to be at major structures. It's like solar farms or wind farms or geothermal farms. You minimize the need for that by having it more or decentralized. And therefore, everyone's putting into the grid, which is able to properly transmit that energy and also store that energy wherever it's needed. That is smart. You only get there by having the energy in the first place to do the research, the development, to get to that end point. Anyone who believes in climate change and doesn't believe in energy independence is an idiot and they're committing suicide slowly. They're stupid. They don't understand what they are talking about or what the consequences of what they are doing. Telling me that solar is the answer. We've been working on solar for 80 years. And we are slightly ahead of where we started at. It's not that we don't know how to do it. It's not efficient. It's not effective. We can't make it work. Why? We need more time. We need more research and development. And that is the best solution we have. Wind is four decades behind our development on solar. Geothermal is six decades behind our work on solar. Ethanol is a poison to the world. It is destroying the oxygen in our oceans. That is a fact. It's not an opinion. 
It's not a guess. It is a scientific fact. These are all facts. If we want to get to renewable energy that is effective, and the best answer truly is nuclear, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, even including all accidents, it is the most effective way to do this. But if we want to be energy independent or have more renewable energy, then we must be energy independent. And that starts with the United States, which then allows the other nations of the world to benefit both economically and geopolitically. Germany no longer has as strong a reliance because natural gas is coming from the United States. We have an excess of that. We have the largest supply in the world. Germany is no longer solely dependent on Russia. Same thing for the EU, which gives them independence, which allows them to stand up to aggression by Russia against any of the pre-Baltics or any of the uh, former Soviet satellite states, which means Russia has to be more calm because they have more of a concerted effort against this that can be unified in its approach as opposed to the piecemeal situation we have right now where Germany and EU have to guess, well, if we go too far, all the pipelines get turned off, our people freeze to death, or they don't have enough electricity for the summer and they boil to death, or we don't have energy for our emergency rooms and just keeping people alive. They can't cook. They can't be saved in hospitals. We have to measure how much of a reproach we can put against them. It's the same trap that we have with China and supply. You can't attack the person who's actually providing you the things you need. So energy independence leads to a better world. And from there, everything else can come. And I can extrapolate everything else from that first step. Second step, somewhat independent of that. Spend less, spend better, period. Spend less, spend better. We spend too much money. The United States just gave $200 million to Pakistan for gender studies. That is a 10, yeah, $200 million to teach gender studies to Pakistan. That is a 10 times increase than what we were giving them two years ago. Two years ago, we gave them $20 million. Now we're giving them $200 million. Do you know why we give them 10 times more? Two reasons. Two reasons. One, because 20 million doesn't work because the Pakistani government and the culture of Pakistan don't care about gender studies. They never have. They never will. So we have to pour in more money to try and convince them that they need to be more like California than Pakistan. You need tons of money over many years to convince people that they have to absolutely reject their culture, their history, and their lifestyle to adopt some foreign idea because someone said it's a great idea. It's stupid. It's not working. That's why they're doing that. Second thing, it's a matter of control because that money is being diverted unofficially, my opinion, to various elite government agencies and individuals and corporations that will benefit from this money. They are getting wealthy and more powerful by accepting this money, diverting it. And I wouldn't dare say that the Pakistani government is corrupt. No, no government is corrupt. And no one is diverting any of the $200 million that America is just throwing hand over fist at Pakistan for their own personal gain. That could never happen, right? Um. And so some individuals may be empowered, giving them a stronger position within that government by supporting this. They are being bought. They're being bought to push this ideology that doesn't benefit the people, the culture, the history, but it does help that small elite group of individuals who can steer the government a certain way. Their temporary gain is a gain for temporarily for America. Geopolitically, it changes the direction and now we have to wonder, what is the consequence of that? Honestly, the true answer is it's a waste of money and the Pakistani government is going to revolt because the whole the history, the culture, and the people don't believe it. We're wasting money and we're creating adversaries for the future. We're creating an adversarial situation that doesn't need to exist. So again, spend better, spend less. If you really must have gender studies in Pakistan for some God unknown reason, 
then fantastic. Spend $2 million. Why? Because they don't want it. Lead by example. And if it works in California, if it works in the United States, if it works in the UK and Germany, then Pakistan will follow because it's effective. It doesn't cost a lot of money to convince people of the truth and something that's effective. It costs insane amounts of money to convince people of something that is failing before their eyes and saying you have to do it anyway because it's great. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. So we spend less. We spend more effective. Okay. The, now I have $198 million that I can spend. Gee, I could feed how many families in the United States or around the world with that? How many homeless people can I protect with that? How much aid can I provide to Africa, the place that's going to give us all the heavy metals for those climate change you want to have, all those developments? I now have $198 million I can drop into Africa to provide them with food, um, roads, water, education systems, to stabilize their governments so they're not constantly having warlords fight over every little piece of dirt. How many things can I do with $198 million? I guarantee you I can help multiple countries around the world and my own to better effect than $200 million to try and convince Pakistanis that there are 63 genders that they will never believe that doesn't even work in California. Does that make more sense? So there's two ideas with examples why what I would change economically that benefits America first, but the consequences, I'm helping the world.